Welcome to Unibet's Inside the Octagon. I'm John Gooden and with me as always is Dan the Outlaw Hardy. From December 10th, the UFC goes into overdrive with the biggest fight week in the history of the promotion, culminating with UFC 194 and the showdown between Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor. Here on Inside the Octagon, we like to go the extra mile. So this is the first of four shows where we will be analyzing all the key matchups of the week and bringing you the latest odds from Unibet. Today, we take a close look at the run-up to UFC 194, starting with the Ultimate Fighter finale with Frankie Edgar versus Chad Mendes in the headline act, then a top of the pile lightweight clash between Edson Barboza and Tony Ferguson. And also we cast our eyes over the women's strawweight encounter between Rose Nama Yunus and Paige Van Zandt. So Dan, let's talk about that main headline attraction of the Ultimate Fighter finale, Frankie Edgar versus Chad Mendes. Let's set it up with the facts and the stats. So, taking a look between these two featherweight warriors, not a great deal between them physically. We have a former UFC lightweight champion in Frankie Edgar, a two-time challenger for the featherweight crown in Chad Mendes, but what else can you take from these? Well, the thing that, that stands out to me is the 100% takedown defense for Chad Mendes. It's really got to upset Frank Edgar's approach to it. We know that one of his strengths is his wrestling game, and we know that he has a lot of success with his striking because of his wrestling game, because of that confidence. So if that is somehow taken away by the 100% takedown defense of Chad Mendes, that may force him into a striking exchange, which may take away you know, a strong element of his game that really affects the outcome of the fight. Okay, well, let's get straight into your analysis runs then, Dan, and take a look at Frankie Edgar first. I mean, he's a high volume guy. He mixes things up very well, yep. but I think you've you've particularly looked at his wrestling for this. Yeah, yeah. Well, of all the people in the UFC and of all the wrestling credentials that we have in the UFC, I don't think really there's anybody that puts it together as well as Frankie Edgar. Yeah. And it's not necessarily just the wrestling ability, but it's his it's his tenacity. It's the way that he chains things together, and it's the way that he works in his striking with his wrestling. Okay. It's really beautiful to watch. So. The first thing I want to talk about is, is the takedown on, on Uriah Faber here. It's this body lock, and, it, and he just adjusts it around his opponent. No matter where he goes, he adjusts it. And as soon as they're on the floor, he's constantly looking for places, opportunities to strike. Even if they're getting back up, he'll allow them back up, but he's going to punish them as they're doing it. BJ Penn on the floor, again, same as we always see with Frank Edgar. He just steamrolls over people, flattens them out. And this is BJ Penn. You don't flatten out BJ no. Penn very easily. And this is a, a really important talking point for me. This posture, and I've experienced this firsthand, GSP does this very well. When he stands up in your guard, he's effectively tripoding himself. Now, if you remove Cobb Swanson entirely from this position here, Frank Edgar falls flat on his face. Because although he's tripoded on his legs here, his weight is onto Cobb Swanson. So you've got to remember that Cobb Swanson's got his, his, his guard closed here and he's pushing uh, Frank Edgar away with his thighs. But this weight from Frank Edgar is driving straight down into Cub Swanson. So all that weight is driving down into his shoulders, which is keeping him pinned to the mat. Stacking him to the mat. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, Cub Swanson has two options here. He can open his guard, put his hips on the floor, but then Frank Edgar is going to be on top position hitting him with shots. Or he can keep his guard closed and keep that distance away, but that takes away his attacking potential. Okay. And a lot of the time you'll see these guys, they'll, they'll find themselves in this position. They'll feel kind of a bit desperate and they'll give up the pass. They'll allow him to pass in order to progress the fight. And this again with the body lock I was talking about. Now, let me talk about this. I'm going to go back just a second. This is one of my favorite takedowns in the UFC ever. <laughs> and I'm going to tell <laughs> you why. We've got to get this right. Then. I'm going to tell you why. And, and I'm going to talk about this because uh, Frank Egg used this against Gray Maynard as well. It's this short right uppercut he uses. Now, you can see here, Cub Swanson's got weight on his hands as well as his feet. So what, what Frank Egg is going to do, he's going to throw a short right uppercut which lifts Cub Swanson's hands off the mat, puts all of his weight onto his legs. And as soon as he does that, you're gonna see Frank Edgar spin round and dump him. It's a really nice takedown. So watch for the right uppercut and watch for Cub Swanson's hands coming off the mat. There it is, just yeah. a short shot and then switch and puts him on the floor. Straight into side control as well, which is a good position. Perfect. And then again, I call this the orbit takedown. Look, he goes around him twice, pivots around him. Cub Swanson's constantly trying to play catch up, but Frank Edgar's always getting, getting to his back. And it's just that position, that body lock. And this is, you know, seconds from the end of the fight. He's never, ever going to slow down. He's always going to keep that pressure on. And Cub Swanson just cracked eventually. There was nothing he could do about it. And it's that onslaught, that steamroller in style that he's got that just exhausts people. Constant pressure. Well, let's take a look at Chad Mendes. And he's not a bad wrestler himself. Not and bad. he's got Division One <laughs> credentials. So uh, yeah, yeah. how is he going to size up in this one? 
Well, again, you know, he's an exciting guy. He's very explosive, very fast, but his takedown defense is fantastic. Look at this. Look at that. Sprawls up the fence away from <laughs> Clay Guida and then sp immediately spins to take his back. So he turns takedown defense into a positive situation. Here, taking Conor McGregor down. Beautiful turn in the corner and then lifting, changing his direction. And here, a beautiful short takedown. Watch this progression. Straight to half guard. Pressure's on the head, shoulder pressure, slides his leg through, knee on the leg. Constantly thinking ahead to improve his exactly. position. Exactly. It's an onslaught. It never slows down. And this is a good example. This is a, about a minute long at the end of this fight. You'll see the clock counting down the corner. But that head pressure on the back of the neck means that Lamas can never look at his opponent. He's always trying to play catch up. Where he's the been, head goes, the body goes, exactly. all that. And yeah. he's disorientated, he's getting hit with shots. And Chad Mendes is just managing this position. He's just measuring where he wants to strike next. Lamas just never got back into the fight after that knockdown. And it was basically because Chad Mendes was controlling his posture all the way through and hitting him with shots. So, although his wrestling is fantastic, it's the defensive wrestling that's going to cause Frankie Edgar the problems. They're not half bad at that wrestling, not bad. are they? <laughs> uh, we're going to take a look at social media stuff now. Thanks again to everyone that poses their questions on Twitter. We really do appreciate it. And we get some very good ones indeed. I'm going to pick this one right here from Luke Jones. Thank you, Luke. Will the wrestling of Edgar and Mendes cancel each other out? And who will have the advantage on the feet? Well, yeah, th their wrestling ability may cancel each other out. But I think that Chad Mendes will back off the wrestling if he fails a couple of takedowns. I think he'll, he'll focus more on his striking. He believes in his punching power. Yeah. He's got a whole bunch of knockouts in, in his you know, most recent fights. Whereas Frankie Edgar won't slow down, he won't be discouraged. And this is one thing that's kept him in a lot of his fights. You know, you watch that fight against Gray Maynard, his most recent oh, one. Oh, it's never say die. It, it's unbelievable how he keeps himself in the fight. He will never, ever back down. And that's really where he comes into his own in this, because as Chad Mendes will slowly start to slow down, Frankie Edgar will continue on. Um, and I'm not saying that Chad Mendes has not got great conditioning, but we have seen him slow down. The fight like Nick Lentz, he slowed down in that fight a little bit. And that's partly because of his, you know, he's such a powerful guy. When he throws, he throws with 100%. Whereas when uh, Frankie Edgar's throwing, it's much more of a 60%, 70% power, so he can maintain it over the duration. And but he's he, used to preparing for 25 minutes. But he did, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a big thing as well. But Chad Mendes did so very well against Joe Seado. He put on the pressure for he a did. long time. but against another pressure fighter, yeah. we shall see. Uh, well, let's talk about striking then. Frankie Edgar under mm -hmm. Mark Henry over on the East Coast, as you were talking about earlier, ties it in so very well. And I know that you've got some stuff to show yeah. us. Uh, beautiful footwork, good hand speed, good combinations. But it's just the classical training of his boxing. He, he does things by the book. He, he knows where his head should be, gives himself the, the highest percentage opportunities to stop these guys and to land his strikes. And, you know, he's fighting guys like Gray Maynard who are, you know, big power punchers. Sure. But again, you know, it's coupling that with the wrestling ability. And there's that uppercut. I'm going to talk about it in a second. We're going to see it on the replay. But it's the coupling, the wrestling offensive, which failed against a guy with good takedown defense like Gray Maynard. So he shoots in. The takedown gets stuffed. But then watch this right uppercut again. The same one he uses against, uh, against Cub Swanson. It's here, just there. Yeah. Hits him. Knocks, him, knocks him down for a second, disorientates him. And then this just avalanche of strike comes and he gets the fight finished. Beautiful right hook gets the fight finished. And, and this is what I'm talking about with him coupling his, his wrestling with his striking. It's those short shots that disorientate you, whereas when okay. you're in wrestling mode, you're thinking about defending takedowns, you get hit with a shot, and just for a second, it takes you out of your takedown defense, or it takes you out of the fight entirely, and, and, and you get caught with a good clean shot like that. And we also know that Frankie can take a good shot, having been the, you know, the champion yeah. at lightweight, which yeah. is a very strong division indeed. It, it is, and, and undersized as well. You see, now, now he's in the featherweight division, he's fighting guys that are much more, much similar to his size. But, yeah. I mean, he's, he's taken some immense punches from, from fighters in the past, and he's, and he's not shaken. He's always stayed there. And if anyone can pack a punch, it's Chad Mendes. I mean, single punch knockout power. Uh, against Aldo, he, he put a really good fight together, as we were just saying. Beautiful uppercut, followed by a double left hook. Rocks Aldo and got his respect most definitely in that fight. Yeah. Against Elkins, another guy that can take a lot of punishment, a lot a of damage, and can really, you know, keep pushing the pace. Chad Mendes, confident in his punching power, pushes forward, lands that overhand right, and just and disorientates him. That was the end of the fight. And it's that right hand over the top again with Yatsin Meza. Watch the full fight. He fakes him. He gets Meza to throw the left hook. Comes over the top. He does it a couple of times early on in the fight. So not only has he got the power, but he's got the striking knowledge to back it up. He can look for opportunities, he can create opportunities. Again, take down defense once he knocked Clay Guida down, circles around to a dominant position, and then continue to strike. And watch this short, powerful combination. Left hook, right hook, bang, bang, beautiful. Really nice shots. 
as soon as Chad Mendes closes that distance and starts throwing those really short, powerful punches, you can generate so much power. And that's really where Frankie Edgar's, Edgar's got to watch out because, you know, a 25-minute fight is a long time to keep Chad Mendes' fists off your chin. Yeah, and obviously they have a really good insight with Frankie Edgar being the last opponent of Uriah Faber. So yeah. they've got a really good insight there. So mm. this is going to be a spectacular matchup. Which of these featherweight warriors will emerge as the next greatest threat to the king of the division? As ever, Unibet have some great odds on this fight. With the ability to bet on the winner, the method of victory and the round, along with a host of other possible markets. Unibet has got you covered. Watch and bet live with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. And if you look at both sets of the odds, Unibet strongly believes that the victory is far more likely to come from a KO or TKO as opposed to a submission. So what do you make of that, Dan? Well, they've both got good hands, they've both got power. It makes sense that someone's going to get stopped. OK, well, let's move along to a huge lightweight clash on the same card. And I'm going to set it up right here. Edson Barboza versus Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson on a real tear mm. right now. What do you make of the stats that we have here, Dan? I'm really excited about this fight, first and foremost. I think both of these guys have got a lot of potential to make this a really exciting one. Edson Barbosa, a fantastic striker, really good takedown defense at 82%, a high work rate as well. But, you know, Tony Ferguson is on a roll right now. He just finds ways to win. And a lot of the time, people just struggle with his physicality, with the way he moves. He's quite unorthodox and he's got really unusual striking. So. You know, it's, a, it's an exciting fight. It's a very classical, you know, strict Muay Thai striker against the guy that's much more about, you know, opportunity and, and finishing. Yeah, six fights, four finishes, I think three bonus checks for Tony Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about Edson Barboza first. And if I was to go and tell someone to have a look at technique, <laughs> I, you can't go far wrong by no. saying, take a look at Edson Barboza and how he puts together particularly his, his kicks. Yeah, well, you know, I, we've got to look at this one. We've got to look at the one that everyone always remembers. And, I, you know, I love Terry Etim. It's, it's unfortunate that it was him, and I'm sure he's seen this far too many times, but Marvelized. just look at that. I mean, you know, you couldn't have timed it any better. A perfectly executed kick, heel lands right on the side of the cheek. And he didn't even lose his balance afterwards as well. Lands on his feet, straight back to a fighting stance. And he knew it was done. 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously a very skilled guy and confident enough to throw wild spinning techniques against a guy like Terry Etim as well, who was a dangerous strike in his own right. Yeah, you for know, sure. Edson Barbo, so we, we, know, we know what he can do. We know what he's good at. He hits very hard. He's very confident in his striking ability. He's got good footwork. But he looks for these opportunities. Against Bobby Green, he was up against a guy that was quite unorthodox, but still confident enough to throw those spinning kicks. Against Cowboy, a strong tie boxer, he showed good head movement, good footwork, and good power punch. And watch this left hook. Beautiful counter left hook. Stops Cowboy right for one second. And then as soon as Cowboy steps in, again, confident in his punching power, confident in his chin, he'll stand in the pocket and trade. And talking about his kicks, poor old Evan Dunham. I remember speaking to him after that fight and he's, he was just like, there was just nothing I could do. Yeah. Took the win right out of him. I mean, watch the replay. It literally just clips his belly button. It's just, yeah, just a little it, tickle. Doesn't it even look. Enough. No, it doesn't even look. And, you know, talk to tough guys. Evan Dunham, one of the grittiest guys I've ever, I've ever worked with. And you, you're not going to put him away with one shot normally. It, it shows how well Edison Barboza puts these things together, you know. He, and, uh, and he's quite an entertaining guy as well. I've had a good chat with him. He's, he, you know, he loves being in the sport. He loves being a part of the whole show. And, and, a, and a, a fight that's going to put on this kind of pressure against Tony Ferguson, you know, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that's going to make a fantastic performance out of one of these two guys. Well, let's take a look at Tony Ferguson then. He's a guy that quietly goes about his business outside of the octagon, mm -hmm. but he's been making some serious noise inside. Yeah, yeah. It, performances speak for themselves. Again, another confident young man. He's a well-rounded skill set. Another unorthodox fighter here, Kakuno. And, you know, it took him a couple of minutes to work him out. He was a bit unorthodox. He caught him with a few shots, but wasn't very confident. As soon as he felt like he found his range, bang. Lovely. There's the fight over. You know, it was done. Slip and rip. Yeah, it, you know, it set him up perfectly for it. Wore him down with, it, with an onslaught of pressure, takedowns and, uh, and long-range strikes. And again, Abel Trujillo, long-range striking. Beautiful work on the takedown. You know, good pressure, drags him down to the floor. And again, very much like Frankie Edgar, constant pressure when they hit the Showed floor. Showed he could take a shot as well. It did. And watch this. I'm going to show you in slow motion again in a second. Watch this hand fighting. So, hits him there. He's going to switch, switch grips. So now he's controlling this wrist here, which takes away one defense. Now this arm, obviously because his opponent's behind him, yep. you can't see exactly <clears throat> what's going on. And he, he punches that through with venom. 
gets it right under the chin and locks up immediately. And look at his face, he knows he's got it. It's sunk in, he's happy with it, tucks his chin nice and tight. There was nothing Abel Trio could do in that, in that situation. And it's just, you know, it's that, that opportunistic uh, fighting style of, of Tony Ferguson. He, he'll create opportunities for himself and then he'll attack it with 100%. And if you're not ready for it, you're going to get finished. Both of these guys, really exceptionally exciting fighters. Mm. Cannot wait to see that one go down. But earlier on in that fight week, yeah. we're going to see a beautiful strawweight contest between Rose Namajunas and Paige Van Zandt. Rose Namajunas stepping in for Joanne Calderwood. Let's take a look at... Yeah, I'm going to hit that button. <laughs> Both young in their career and, and young in life indeed. Uh, but what we can take from this, I think... Rose Nami Yunus is slightly shorter in her fight time, but all of her wins coming by way of submission. Yeah, she does. She, she's very good at, at dealing with the extremities of the fight. I like to watch her quick kickboxing at range. I like to watch her in, in a grappling situation as well, chasing those submissions. Okay. Whereas, um, for me, I mean, if we look at this takedown defense and takedown accuracy, she's much more of a uh, of a wrestler. She's, she, and a it team makes sense. Exactly. Like. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah. She's surrounded by them. So she, she controls the, the mid-range, whereas for me, Rose controls the, ex controls the extremities of the fight, which makes it interesting because then she has to decide where she wants to contest the fight and can she, in fact, keep, uh, keep Paige Van Zandt off her for that long. OK, so what have we got between these two strawweight contenders? Um, well, let's just have a look at them. Let, let's, let's have a look at, uh, at Rose to start with. Like I was saying, she's a good kickboxer. She likes to kickbox at range, but in, in this fight against Carla, it took Carla a little while to get into it, but eventually she was able to close that range and make it a wrestling fight, and that's when she started to struggle. Against Angela Hill, uh, once she started to feel comfortable on the feet, she took the fight to the ground, finished with a beautiful rear naked choke. So like I was saying, you know, she, she controls the extremities of the fight. She's good at range, she's good in a grappling situation, whereas if we watch Paige Van Zandt's fight, it's much more about pressure, about tenacity. Joe Rogan called it heart and hustle, and I think that's the best way of describing her style. Technically, she makes a few mistakes here and there. She's a bit ragged around the edges in some of her techniques, but it's her enthusiasm and it's her beautiful chaos, it isn't is, it? It is, it yeah. is, exactly that. And the thing is, my theory on this is because she trains at Alpha Male, because she's working with guys that are a similar size to her, but guys that she trusts, guys that she feels comfortable working with, she can explore the full game of mixed martial arts and she can work moving seamlessly from one area to another, knowing that she's not really going to pay for it in the gym, she's not going to get beaten up too bad which gives her this confidence to explore you know, the, the, the seamless transitions between striking and grappling. And if you watch particularly that fight against Felice Herrig, was her best performance so far. Yeah. I mean, she just outclassed Felice Herrig everywhere. And Herrig is a, a real veteran of the sport. She's she been is. around female mixed martial arts for a long time. So you know, that was a good statement for Paige Van Zandt to say, I'm here and I can do it all, so how are you going to beat me? And that's the problem that Rose has got to figure out. What a fight. Really looking forward to that one. So three great events during that week. So just a reminder then of what is coming up in December. Kicking it all off on December 10th, it is Rose Namajunas and Paige Van Zandt headlining the first of three shows in three days. They are followed by Frankie Edgar and Chad Mendes slugging it out on the Ultimate Fighter finale. Before the fight we have all been waiting for, UFC 194 on December 12th in Las Vegas to determine the undisputed featherweight champion. What a week it is set to be. Remember, this is just the beginning from Inside the Octagon. This is just one of four shows we'll be doing in the build-up to Aldo versus McGregor. So please make sure you keep your eyes open for the next show to land. Until then, it's goodbye from us.